when a never before heard of team plows their way through the North American Open Division trials, only dropping a single game and taking first place, then promptly 3 0s NRG, it sure garners a lot of attention and questions. Who are these people? Did they abuse a game mechanic? What comp did they run? Today, we'll be answering and picking apart that last question. Welcome to Behind the Action. In this episode, we'll be breaking down the infamous composition known for being completely brain dead yet insufferably powerful. Enter the GOATS Comp. You may have heard the term in passing, or maybe even fell victim to it on Ranked Ladder but not know how it works, why it works, and most importantly, how to counter it. First, let's get the fundamentals of the comp on the table. GOATS consist of Reinhardt, Zarya, Diva, Brigida, Lucio, and Moira. The overall goal of the comp is to hit the enemy team like a train, isolating a single enemy and essentially insta-killing them. I welcome adversity. It may initially sound a lot like Dive, but it operates a lot more aggressively. No Dive characters, save Diva and Lucio, are played, making this comp like Death Ball on steroids. Let's take a look at an example of GOAT's comp being used firsthand, and who better to show off its effectiveness than by none other than GOATs themselves. In this example, we're going to look at how GOATs chose to initiate team fights. One of Gator's favorite ways to initiate is to get his Moira to pop coalescence, whilst lining himself up in GOATs' backline to penetrate both friendlies and enemies alike. After popping coalescence, Envision immediately falls back, creating space for Gator to move forward at an aggressive pace. Once Envision's Reinhardt falls, there's nothing stopping the rest of GOATs as they clean up. For a second example of an overly aggressive initiation, GOATs waits for Envision to work their way around the statue, which puts a wall behind them. Gator asks for a bubble the instant he hits shift and barrels into the enemy without any regard for safety. Watch as the rest of GOATs immediately surge in, following up on the disruption caused by the unexpected charge. The damage is too much for Envision's main tank, and GOATS forces them back behind the choke. Considering their lack of damage dealing heroes, GOAT sure deals a lot of damage. The triple healers in tandem with the triple tank allow brain dead plays such as these, because nothing ever dies if the enemy team doesn't counter you properly. However, the two aforementioned initiation methods are the GOATS way of running GOATS. So what about putting this powerful comp under the control of Koreans? In the game between Runaway and Kongdu Panthera in Season 2 of Contenders Korea, Runaway famously utilizes the GOATS comp to bring Kongdu to Game 7. Let's look at the first fight on the first map of the last game. Right out of the gate, look at the compositions on both sides. Double GOATS. We're about to see what happens if an immovable object is met with an unstoppable force. A few seconds from initiation, Roar fire strikes a tree and the fight begins. Runaway moves successfully as a unit and positions themselves on point, which is the correct thing to do. Everything is looking good until Bumper goes for a familiar bubble charge and misses. Without their main tank, Runaway is shieldless. Kongdu closes in around Runaway and forces them out the back of the point, all the while wiping them out. So what went wrong? I bet you can guess. There was nothing to sandwich the enemy team against and nothing to cancel his charge animation so he had no choice but to go downtown. Looking back at GOATS, this initiation style was used properly, utilizing the terrain as an advantage, rather than a limiting factor. Maybe Bumper fat-fingered his shift? Okay, so now we understand what GOATS comp is, and how it can be used to aggressively force the opponent's hand to gain an advantage in a teamfight. But why does it work? If you've ever played against it, you know exactly why. Let's take a look at this Valiant vs Gladiators game for a moment. Valiant has a strong defensive composition, with an even stronger anchored defensive position and consistent damage provided by Junkrat. However, any plan they had fell apart when the Gladiators simply stole presence from the Valiant by walking onto point and dictating the flow of the fight. Strangely, the tides turn and we see genuine fear from the Valiant. It looks like the last thing any of them want to do is get on point and be engulfed by the impenetrable wall that is the gladiators. No matter, Fissure takes it upon himself to extend past the choke and shatter while Bishu nets a kill with his self-destruct. And gladiators take the point. Valiant learned about the power of goats that day. 
too much health pool, healing, and fear to contest. This is what GOATS thrives off of. But like we saw with Runaway vs. Kongdu Panthera, it only takes a single tank to fall out of line for the team to crumble, especially if the three squishy supports don't have a barrier to hide behind. Now let's talk about countering the comp. On a fundamental level, the concept of utilizing long-range poke damage while running GOATS is fictitious. It's not happening. Utilizing Moira instead of Ana takes any last source of long-range offense away from anyone in the comp, making it geared more towards forced close-quarter encounters, where every single one of these heroes can thrive. While, yes, D.Va can contest high ground, but doing so will likely not end well without the support from her grounded teammates. The overall best way to counter GOATS is to abuse their lack of range, such as running range DPS to utilize splash damage. To prove its effectiveness, let's look at a push made by the Philadelphia Fusion in the Grand Finals of Season 1 of the Overwatch League. To begin, we see Fusion running classic GOATS, and Spitfire are running a dive variant, but specifically with a Farah and a corresponding Mercy pocket. Starting the attack, Fusion has parked themselves on point and become a flytrap, snapping lethally at anything that comes near. But suddenly, Neptuno drops to an unseen threat in the sky. Farah. Fusion seems to be winning the fight, but Birdring continues to pick off Fusion supports, and something must be done about the free reign Farah above. Poco frantically searches for an opening but runs out of fuel, while Hotbot pops Coalescence and eventually grinds Birdring's health to zero. Spitfire has an internal plan, to capitalize on the only advantage they have during this fight. They set the plan in motion. Gesture burns his jump so that Nuss can safely Guardian Angel his way to safety high up in the air, and before losing altitude he pops Valkyrie to become a truly unkillable target. Nuss sees a chance and swoops in for a resurrect before Fusion can even respond, bringing Gesture back into the fight. Birdring is now back from spawn and solo alt Sado. A worthy trade given how we know Goat's comp collapses without its main tank. Fury launches his self-destruct, and EQO is found without his personal bubble. And just like that, Fusion is now on the retreat with no sustain to boot. We saw Nuss and Birdring abuse the lack of reach from Fusion to stall out the point and ultimately force Fusion to retreat, even though they had the advantage in numbers near the beginning of the fight. All in all, it's a powerful comp to use when the enemy team crumbles under any sort of pressure. It rewards aggression and hardly has any inherent risks, allowing anyone to run it decently, as long as you're holding W. The team who first ran such a comp may be quickly fading into obscurity, but the comp will live on as a cancer and ladder, and a strong pick in the tier 2 scene. That's all from us. What do you think of this composition? Do you believe it will be used in Season 2 of the Overwatch League? As always, let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Thanks for watching.